What's going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys and break down some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading into the first week of September in 2019. I also wanted to break down the overall markets today, in specific the futures, the S&P futures, the Dow futures, and the NASDAQ futures, because you guys can clearly see they're actually deep in the red right now. The S&P's in the red, the NASDAQ's in the red and the Dow Jones is in the red right now. So I want to break those down and kind of get an understanding because the markets are closed tomorrow. So the futures are what I'm watching today and tomorrow to get an understanding of what's going to happen potentially on Tuesday. So this is a very good way, in my opinion, to prepare for the next week by looking at the stock market futures. We're also going to take a look at the China tariffs because those went into effect and the U.S. tariffs, which in my opinion is why the these markets are gapping down here. So without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it. We'll break down the futures, then we'll get into what I'm personally watching, as well as take a look at this article on my Safari tab to get an understanding about these Chinese and these U.S. tariffs, guys. So right now, the E-mini S&P 500 index futures, they're currently down $18.25, down 0.62%. And if you guys don't know, the futures market it actually opens up at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. And when the markets are closed, when there's a holiday like tomorrow on Monday, it's Labor Day. The futures markets, they're still open. So that's why I said a couple of seconds ago that you can actually do analysis even when the markets are closed, which is very, very beneficial for breaking down and kind of trying to predict what will happen in the next day. But anyway, that's what the S&P is looking like right now, and it's continuously dropping down $19 now. The NASDAQ is down about 72 points. Uh, why is this freezing? Oh, here we go. The NASDAQ, let me show you guys, is down 71 points, down nearly 1%, 0.92% to be exact. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average Futures right now, they're down about 0.56%, down 150 points. Points. So if you notice on all of these futures, guys, uh, I know if we go back to the S&P, I'll show you guys here. Notice how they're all getting rejected by a major moving average on the four hour chart. Notice how on the ES right here, the E-mini S&P, we're actually getting rejected under that 180 SMA. We saw the big gap down, which happens to be a resistance that we struggled to break out of throughout the course of August, as you guys can clearly see here. So this is a very uh, bad sign for the bull out there that we are having trouble to break out of this 180 SMA, right? It's clear that it's acting as a resistance again. If we go to the NASDAQ, right, you guys can see the very similar thing to the S&P, a very similar thing. The 180 SMA, this yellow uh, moving average here, it's been a resistance in the past, and now with the big gap down, right, we confirmed the rejection under that 180 SMA, which in my opinion now is leading to further downside potentially downwards to $7,450 for the NASDAQ, which is actually a support from the past couple of times that we've uh, held it, as you guys can clearly see. At $7,450, we held that in the beginning of August, in the middle of August, towards the end of August, in the, th in the third and fourth weeks of August, and then we saw that run, and now we're starting to, uh, you know, push back down into the middle of this channel, so that's a level I'll be watching for the NASDAQ at around 74.50. Going over here to the Dow Jones, you guys can see very similar, right? The 180 SMA, although we gapped above it a little bit here, with this gap down now, the break below it, we're trending under it yet again, and you guys can see from the course of August, over the past couple of weeks, this level has been a very strong level of resistance. In the beginning of August, we got hit at that level, in the middle and towards the end of August as well with a clear support at around $25,450 to about $500. So at this point, guys, the fact that we're trading right now at about um, $26K on the NASDAQ, right? We're right about, actually, let's just zoom in a bit so we can get a better figure on that. Right now, we're trading at about, okay, 26, I don't know why I didn't, didn't just look up here, but it says 26200 right? That's where we're trading 
happening right now on these uh, Dow Jones futures. So just keep an eye on this 50 SMA here, guys. It seems like it is holding above that right now. So I say if we break below that heading into Tuesday session, maybe even tomorrow, right, we may be testing that low, that support at around $25,500. So overall right now, guys, that's what the markets are looking like. And those are some target levels, some support levels for the uh, Dow and the NASDAQ. I don't know if I talked about one on the S&P. Let me just go back and show you guys that one very quickly. On the S&P here, I'd be watching 2840 to 2850, right? That's a very clear level of support. We triple bottom there. Uh, you know, it's very evident that we held that throughout the uh, month of August, just like on the S&P or rather the Dow and the uh, NASDAQ. But again, we're getting hit by that 180 SMA. So I'd just keep an eye on where we're pushing, um, you know, in this channel. Are we going to retest the uh, resistance tomorrow? Are we going to push more towards the support? This is what I'm personally watching, um, you know, on these major markets and on these futures, guys. So actually, before we do get into what stocks and ETFs I'm watching, let's talk about what is gapping down the markets very quickly for those of you guys that are interested. And let me pull up this article. You guys can see U.S. Chinese tariffs officially take effect as trade war escalates. And we knew that these tariffs, at least the first round of these tariffs, they were going to take effect in the beginning of September. And I'm sorry about all of these nonsense ads here, guys. Um, I probably have to sign up to this platform to not have these ads. But just because it's just simply I'm looking at an article, I don't really have to sign up. But uh, anyway, the U.S. And China began imposing tariffs on each other's goods on Sunday, escalating the trade war between the two countries, even as Beijing sounded a, a, a defiant tone. The United States should learn how to behave like a responsible global power and stop acting as a school bully, the official state-run uh, Xinhao news agency said. As the, as the world's only superpower, it needs to shoulder its due responsibility and join other countries in making this world a better and more prosperous place. Only then can America become great again. So I guess that's from Beijing, uh, those words there. The Trump administration imposed 15% tariffs on more than $125 billion in Chinese goods, including shoes, clothing, and many household appliances like coffee makers, toasters, and microwaves. China China also started placing tariffs on $75 billion worth of U.S. imports, includes, including 5% duties on U.S. crude oil. The extra tariffs of 5% and 10% were levied on 1,717 items of a total of 5,078 products originating from the U.S. Beijing will start collecting additional tariffs on the rest of these from December 15th. So the U.S. is expected to launch a second round of tariffs of 15% on about $160 billion of Chinese goods on December 15th that will target toys, cell phones, and laptop computers, guys. So like I predicted, right, I've been mentioning this in a bunch of videos in the past here, guys, and if you've been paying attention to the videos, you've probably heard me say this, you know, I was expecting that when the tariffs would go into effect, that the markets would negatively react to this. It's kind of a no-brainer almost because it feels like every time in the past year that new tariffs came that we got the news of the tariffs the markets dropped and when the news or, or rather when the tariffs actually went into effect this dropped the market yet again so that is why I'm bull, uh, bearish rather on the markets over these next two to three months because we have all of these tariffs coming in right now all of these new tariffs that are supposed to hit in the next couple of months and who knows guys, in my opinion, I don't see a trade deal coming anytime soon right now between China and the U.S. And if things escalate and even more tariffs are thrown into this mix right now, that's going to hurt the market even more. So if you're telling me, Stas, in the next two, three months, where do you see the market going? I'm being honest and I'm saying I personally believe, not saying that this is right, but I personally believe the market has more downside here than upside just due to the whole trade 
trade war and due to the escalation that I think is going to occur here in this trade war over the next couple of months. So honestly, that's my opinion. I would love to know what your opinion is down below in the comment section on all of these tariffs that are coming into effect and the future of the trade war. Please let me know what your thoughts are, guys. I love talking to you down below in the comment section. So now that we got that out of the out of the way, now that we understand what's dropping these market futures, now that we analyze the market futures, let's just go into what I'm personally watching for this next week. And to be honest, guys, um, the, the swing trade that I'm currently in right now, which is BAC and one of the top stocks I'm watching, this might bite me in the butt if these futures continue to go down. But that's okay because, you know, Sometimes, you know, the trades that you're in, maybe they don't get affected by what's going on in, you know, the global economy, like what's going on right now with these trade tariffs, but probably BAC will get affected by this as the markets drag down. This will probably drag down financials as well, so this might bite me in the butt, but let's say it doesn't end up getting affected. Let's say it does end up maintaining the current trajectory that it's on right now. Um, I plan on adding more money into BAC and it's one of those top stocks, one of the top stocks that I am watching for this upcoming week in the stock market. And if you guys have been following my channel for the past couple of videos, I've been talking about BAC a lot. We've held 2650, which is a very good sign of upwards push here, right? And, and it's been a support over the past couple of months. You guys can clearly see we held that level back in March. We held that level back in May and we double bottomed and we broke out of the 50 SMA, which in my opinion was a very bullish breakout here in the past couple of weeks. So there's a lot of good signs here um, in BAC. And to be honest, the risk reward right now, there's a lot more reward than there is risk in my opinion um, with BAC here. We can see upside to the top resistance level of about $31. Uh, $31. That offers about a 10 to 11% margin of profit. And to the downside here, you know, to $26, it's around a 3 4% potential for loss. But if you're mitigating your risk, if you have stop losses in place, you can cut that to 2%, 1%, whatever you guys feel comfortable with, right? So at this point, I'm in at about $27.20, roughly that area. And with swing trading, guys, because this is actually a swing play that I'm holding, I like adding money into my positions, um, you know, as the trend continues to vary itself as the trend continues to go up because my philosophy is I don't want to fight against the uh, the trend overall trend in whatever stock or ETF I'm trading I like putting money in as the trend confirms itself for me there's no point in adding money into a stock you know as it's downtrending and hoping that it's going to break out that's kind of stupid right I like following the trend I like following <coughs> the technicals, and that's just how I trade and specifically swing trade, right? So this is the main one that I am watching this week. Again, I might take, I might lose my butt on it. I might take a loss because the markets might affect BAC. Who knows, guys? But the fact that I have a 30 cent buffer already built in because I'm up around 30 cents roughly on my position, you know, this might gap down a bit, 50 cents, a dollar, worst case scenario in pre-market on Tuesday. And then I'll just cut my losses there, take a very uh, brief <clears throat> loss, maybe even a break even if I do get out um, at the right time and then potentially look for a re-entry from there. So that's kind of the goal with BAC here. Tesla is another one that I'm watching. If you guys were paying attention to Tesla, they got some kind of a tariff break, like a tax cut um, in terms of <clears throat> uh, their new model. I think it was like Model 3, Model X, uh, Model 3, Model X, and a couple of other cars as well which actually boosted the stock up pre-market, I believe, on Friday. And I know a lot of you guys know what I'm talking about in reference to that tax cut. And you can see Tesla went from 222 up to 233. We pulled back. We held that 180 SMA here on the five-day, five-minute. And we actually closed the day on an upswing heading into the aftermarket hours on Friday. And this is actually a higher low from the previous, honestly, just confirming our uptrend um, you know, on this five-day, five-minute chart. So at this point, guys, you know, ever since Tesla ran up, 
due to that tax cut, that the tax credit that we saw, that actually opened up a 3% margin from 233 down to where it dipped to about 226. And the fact that, again, we're holding that moving average, that offers around a 3-4% dip by opportunity if the stock is holding these levels, um, you know, heading into the pre-market session on Tuesday. Let's say we gap down heavily back down into, you know, 219. I won't be watching the stock, right? But let's say we're holding 225, holding 226, holding these moving averages. This could definitely be a short-term swing play, um, you know, judging off these time or this, these smaller time frames, but definitely a, a, a swing play if we break above this 180 SMA, um, you know, putting us at 235, you know, this could be an even longer term swing trade, you know, if we go from 225 to 235 and then break that 180 SMA on this four hour chart and go to the 240s, 250s, this could again be a longer term swing trade, uh, which is what I'm really watching for right now in terms of Tesla, because we all know the stock's been battered down quarter after quarter, month after month, pretty much over the past year. Tesla stock has been getting crushed, and I think it's going to return here in the next couple of months. I'm just waiting for that technical break. And just being patient with it, guys, honestly, because a lot of the time you have to be patient when trading. You can't just hop in when you want to hop in. You have to hop in when the stock is giving you the opportunity, right? It's like the stock's yelling to you, now's the opportunity when the technicals are right, when the news, there's nothing negative, right? That's the time to get in. Not when you want to get in, but when the stock is telling you to get in, if that makes any sense, right? That's kind of how I view it sometimes. But anyway, BAC. Tesla. Those are two that I'm definitely watching here. Chipotle Mexican Grill. I've talked about this one a lot. I'm waiting for the pullback on this one, honestly. I'm waiting for the pullback down to that 50 SMA on the four-hour chart. I think that could be a good dip buy for a potential um, swing trade here because we can see over the past couple of months, it's very clear that uh, CMG has been holding that 50 SMA, making higher lows on it, making higher highs above it. It's been a very strong level of support. So I think if we hit 820, if we pop back up to 840, 850, even if we push to a new high from the dip, you know, that could offer around a 3-4% um, margin of profit on Chipotle Mexican Grill. So another one I'm watching, this one's actually been breaking out recently, is UGAS, ticker symbol U-G-A-Z. Good old UGAS, the good old natural gas uh, ETN here. And I'll show you guys on the 10 day 30 what I mean about it breaking out. We hit a low of $12 on the 23rd of August and since then guys we're up nearly 20% in this particular ETN and it trades based upon natural gas slash NG and natural gas has been doing quite well and we've been talking about this level of $2.30 on natural gas it's a very clear resistance right ever since we hit lows of 212 we've been uptrending now we're hitting that 230 level which you guys can clearly see if I zoom in a bit here 230 has been a resistance really since the month of June, right? Month of June, we failed to break out of it until we hit above it in the month of July. Then we dumped below it again. End of July, we failed to get above 830 or 230 rather. We dumped all the way to a low of about $2.02, popped back up. Actually, this is below the low of $2.02, but in the beginning of August, we popped up to 230, got rejected all the way to 202, and now it seems like we're struggling yet again towards the end of August, beginning of September here to break above 230. So, my personal opinion here, my technical analysis is telling me that if we pop above 230, 30 guys if we hold that as a new support there's a good chance we fill up to 240 because take a look last time we broke above 230 back in july we ran up to 240 in the snap of a finger literally in a day or two so this is what i'm actually watching heading into these cold seasons guys the next two levels of resistance are 230 which obviously we're at again like i just said if we break above that 240 if we break 240 next level is going to be around 248 to 250 50. And once we get there, if we get there, then we'll talk about the next levels, which are going to be getting closer to the 260, 270 level, and then so on and so forth. So right now, you know, judging on this 20 day, one hour chart, 
It's very obvious that we see a bullish cross, the 50 SMA is crossing above the 180 SMA. We're riding that 50 SMA. So this is a very critical spot for me for natural gas to hold being this green line. If we break this, we may be going down to that yellow line, but that is not something I want to see. I personally want to see a hold here and then a breakout into the 230s to get into a position on you guys. That's honestly what I'm waiting for, um, you know, in Tuesday's session. And you guys, we may pull down to the 50 SMA. We may pop into 15 again. At this point, we just have to see how natural gas is performing and how it's looking like you guys in particular pre-market hours on um, Tuesday. And for those of you guys that don't know, again, the futures, I mentioned this earlier, the futures for natural gas, they're also open tomorrow, right? Gold, crude oil, silver, all of these different futures, the whole market is opened even when the uh, it's open, even when the stock market itself is closed. So those are a couple that I am watching. If the markets get ugly, guys, you know, the market ETFs I'm watching, TVIX, this is a, a, a volatility ETN. It trades based upon the VIX, right? When the VIX is running up, the volatility in the markets, when the markets are going down in general, the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, whatever it may be, you know, and there's a lot of volatility, TVIX. TVIX does very well, right? We saw one day a couple of months ago, TVIX was up 40%, 40 percent, four zero in one day. So this has the potential of running 10, 20, 30, 40, maybe even 50, 60 percent in days where there's insane volatility, uncertainty, and just blood in the water in terms of the market. So TVIX, definitely watching this one, right? If the markets continue to drop here, you know, heading into Tuesday, I'm watching SQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ 100 is going down. It goes up at a 3x rate. So let's say the NASDAQ is down 2%. SQQQ is going to be up 6%. SPXS is another one that I'm watching. It's the same thing as SQQQ, but it trades based upon the S&P 500. So let's say the S&P 500 is down 2% one day. SPXS is going to be up 6%. So those are a couple that I'm watching on the market ETF side. And one more before I end up uh, uh, finishing off this video, gold guys, slash GC, gold is gapping up right now since the markets are selling off. Gold right now is up $8.50. It's up 0.56%. So gold right now, it's on a dip. It's holding that 50 SMA. We have about a margin of, let's say, 1-2% to the highs that we saw a couple of weeks ago, or uh, rather like a week ago at this point at 15.65. And there's an ETF that I watch, JNUG, Right, I've been getting a bunch of questions about JNUG. Um, JNUG go goes up whenever GDX goes up, and GDX is a uh, gold miners ETF, and this is actually what JNUG trades based upon. So GDX is going up, right? Gold's going up. Um, JNUG's going up as well at a 3x rate, but it doesn't track gold guys slash GC in terms of JNUG. JNUG tracks GDX. Make sure you understand that because I've been getting questions about what um, uh, JNUG tracks. It's GDX, right? So GDX, I'm watching this one as well as JNUG for the potential bullish move that gold does offer here if it offers it um, this, this upcoming week. So that's pretty much it for this video guys if you enjoyed it feel free to go down below and hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and let me know down below in the comment section you know what are your thoughts on the markets right now what are your thoughts on the futures trade war tariffs are the markets going down in the next two months i would love to know your thoughts because like i said you know i think the markets have a lot more downside right now i think trump's trying to pump up the markets through twitter but i think these strategies these tactics of of putting false hope out there in the markets, you know, I think they're going to die off and they're going to stop working here in the, in the next couple of months. If he keeps trying to say, you know, we're coming to a trade deal, trade talks are going well with no proof behind it, right? I feel like he's just saying this to pump up the markets and then the markets eventually are going to stop believing it, which is very dangerous because at that point, the markets can end up dropping like crazy, guys. So I'd just love to think or see what you guys have to 
think about that. Let me know down below again in the comments, and that's pretty much it, right? So I appreciate you guys a lot for watching, especially for those of you guys that stick to the end. You guys are awesome. You guys are the best. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I hope you all have a great Labor Day. For those of you guys that celebrate that or do anything with your families on that day, I hope you all enjoy it. So yeah, that's it, guys. I'll catch you all tomorrow.